Trail cameras do three things for us. One, give us a lot of intel. Two, give us a lot of hope. And three, give us a lot of despair. And don't get me wrong, I love trail cameras. I love being able to look at the cards. I don't use cell cams at this point. I love being able to look at the cards and see what deer are on there, see how many deer are on there, see what sorts of bucks are on there. But our trail cameras don't always tell the whole story of what's going on. Sure, if you have a time where you've got a deer that's patterned same day, same time, same location, that's awesome. That's not always the case, and I think that's probably the minority of cases when it comes to trail cameras. Several seasons ago, I had a buck that was on camera July until January. Every single night, always nocturnal. I had like two daylight pictures of him that would have been during legal shooting hours the whole season. And I thought, I would love to kill this deer, but I can't ever get him in daylight. So I hunted at, the, at his location where he lived, which is in the stand that I'm sitting in right now. And I would hunt other places too, thinking he's never going to be daylight, I'm never going to be able to see him. The first day of rifle season that year, I went to a different stand. That was one of the daylight pictures I had. He was 20 yards from this stand, and I was somewhere else. Well, finally, gun season ends, all that, and I finally had the light bulb come on where I said to myself, just because he doesn't go by the camera doesn't mean he's not there. He could be 10 yards to the right, 10 yards to the left. He could be behind the tree. He could be somewhere off camera during the daylight hours, and I'm just not seeing him on camera. Doesn't mean he's not there. So I told myself, I'm gonna hunt that stand every single time I go until the season ends. And I hunted it all of December, and I hunted it till the end of the season, which is, January, <clears throat> which is January 15th. And on January 9th, it was negative 17 degrees with the wind chill. I almost didn't go hunting because it was so cold, and I thought, I'm not gonna see anything because it's so cold. And the only deer I saw that night was that buck. He was about he was about five yards from going in front of one of my trail cameras whenever I shot him. He was my biggest deer ever, and it was so rewarding because he was on camera every night, like I said, and finally was there whenever he showed up in daylight. But again, the trail cameras didn't tell the whole story. Yes, I had a ton of nocturnal pictures with him, but there had to be times that he was here in the daylight and I wasn't going because I thought he was always nocturnal. So earlier this season, I had a camera set up pointing the opposite direction that it is right now. And for one or two weeks, I didn't have a single picture of a deer. I even had it on a mineral lick that I had, and I didn't have a single picture of a deer. And I was like, that is so weird. They're not in the timber here. So all I did was I took it, and you can do this test too. And I just reversed it to the other side of the tree, pointing the other direction. And then after that, the next two or three weeks, deer all the time in that direction. Now, if I had gone off the intel that I got that with the camera pointing the other way, I would have thought there was never a deer in the timber here, and I might have gone somewhere else, when the reality was they just weren't going where the camera was. So run a test like that sometime. If you're not seeing deer on your camera in the place that you have it right then, turn your camera the other way. Move your camera five yards to a different tree pointing in a different direction and see what happens. Again, I love trail cameras. I love being able to look at the pictures. But there was a simpler time before trail cameras that some of you may remember where we just had to go on what's going to show up. You know, unless you could scout and find some deer that you knew were there and see them with your own eyes you know, with a spotting scope or binoculars or something. Everything was almost a surprise then. And you know, there's something special and exciting about that too. I think with cell cameras now, it's taken so much of the surprise out of it and the guesswork out of it. It still takes work to kill the deer that you get on camera. It doesn't matter if it's a cell cam or not. You still gotta put a plan together to be able to kill the deer. But I think that as time goes by here, I think people are starting, hunters are starting to appreciate more just getting rid of your cameras altogether going back to having a surprise, just trusting that there's deer there, using scouting techniques, 
preseason, during the season, and so on, to find where deer are with tracks and rubs and scrapes and everything else. And I think that people are starting to appreciate that more, to where we may be seeing a decline in use of cameras. But they're a great tool to have. I do enjoy using mine and seeing what's out there. But there's something special about trusting your instincts, trusting your gut, trusting what you know about hunting and deer and going off of that. Every now and then that surprise deer shows up and that's pretty cool too. Thank you for watching Farming for Whitetails. We'll see you next time.